first podcast for Unit 3. And in this unit, we're going to be looking at uh, the geologic time scale. Uh, we're actually skipping, if you want to follow along and read through the stuff in your book, to chapter 12, <clears throat> starting on page 336. But the geologic time scale uh, gets into historical geology. Uh, what has gone in, uh, on Earth, in Earth's past? And also, how do we know? And the big questions for this unit that we want to really look at is, first off, what is the current estimate of the age of the Earth? And uh, secondly, <clears throat> what is the evidence that uh, geologists have right now to support this age? And we're going to be working through three basic ways that we can start to look back and give an age or a date to how old things are and when they occurred. First off, we're going to be looking at something called relative dating. And relative dating, first off, isn't going to tell you uh, an actual age. Relative dating is really just putting uh, events uh, in order. You know, what happened first, second, third, so on. And it's based on one main principle. It's called the principle of uniformitarianism. And that basically states that <clears throat> the physical, chemical, and biological laws that operate today also operated in the geologic past. So, for example, uh, we can look today and see that we have earthquakes, we have landslides, volcanic eruptions, glaciers, uh, different rock layers and uh, different formations. <clears throat> those are all being created and destroyed today. Uh, and those processes that we can see uh, today, we think happened in the past. And if we know how they work today, forming, say, a volcanic island arc. And if we find a volcanic island arc in the past, we know how that formed. We don't have to be there to see it, but we can look at those rock layers and those events recorded in the rock layers and know uh, the general process and how they occurred. Uh, what could have possibly changed in the past were the rates, the intensities, and the scales. Relative dating is uh, basically something called stratigraphy. And stratigraphy has these principles uh, that were developed by uh, Steno and Hutton and Lyle, but there are a couple that seem very obvious and some that are a little bit tougher. First off, uh, you can see here is a picture of my brother and he's sitting on the edge of the Grand Canyon. And the Grand Canyon is a great place to look and experience geology. And first law here is the law of original horizontality. You can see that uh, he's sitting on this white piece of land, uh, limestone on one side. And if you look a little bit closer in the picture, you can actually see that there's some in the background. Now, if we have a better picture of, uh, of the Grand Canyon, there we go, we can zoom in. We can see that off in the distance, there's the same piece of limestone and it is almost completely flat and it goes as far as the eye can see. So that takes care of two laws here. First off, law of original horizontality that uh, rock layers, sedimentary rock layers, are put down in nearly horizontal layers, and <clears throat> sometimes those are known as strata. And also one other one, law of lateral continuity. That strata extend in all directions until they thin out, uh, sometimes known as a pinch out, or they reach the edge of that basin. Okay, so if I were to dump out, uh, say, uh, water onto the floor, it would spread out in the thin layer until it uh, eventually hits the sides of the basin, hits the room or uh, the tub, and then starts to fill up. That's two basic laws. Another is the law of superposition. <clears throat> superposition is a pr uh, fairly obvious one also. If you look at the rock layers recorded in this, um, this outcrop, you can see there's some on the bottom and then some towards the top here. Superposition just states that the ones on the bottom were there first, so they are older, and the ones on top are younger. So if we go back to the Grand Canyon, here's another view of the Grand Canyon and its beautiful layers. The layers here up on the top, these limestones, are youngest. <clears throat> and at the, at the bottom, we have this uh, Vishnu schist, uh, and then this is the oldest, and then we get the the sandstone and the slate, or excuse me, shale, and then the limestone up here, which is the youngest. So oldest on the bottom, youngest on the top. That's basically the law of uh, 
a superposition. Unless things are overturned, which is a possibility, um, <clears throat> if it's undisturbed, then the oldest stuff is on the bottom, youngest stuff is on the top. A few other little tidbits. Sometimes you have inclusions, uh, things that are included into a rock layer. And if you have things included into a rock layer, all right, that means uh, those pieces that are included must be older than the rock layer that they're inside. That's pretty simple. So these little chunks were older than the stuff that's in uh, the layer that it's in. Right, these are the different principles. One more, <clears throat> it's called cross-cutting relationship. Basically, this states that if a feature cuts across a, a layer, then that, that feature is actually younger than the stuff it actually cuts across. <clears throat> so, for example, let's take a look at this picture. We've got this black igneous intrusion and these layers that are surrounding it. Well, which one would be younger, which one would be older? These rock layers, according to this, have to be the older, and this would be the younger. And it makes a little bit of a sense, hopefully, that <clears throat> if this is going to cut into it or cut across it, you have to have these rock layers first. So those are the principles and laws that guide us to figure out how old things are, but there are a few weird things that show up in the rock record. And they're normally called these unconformities. Now, an unconformity is basically um, basically gaps. And you can think that geologists approach an outcrop like the Grand Canyon, where you can see these rock layers, as a history book. And just like in the history book, we can read from the beginning uh, what happened first uh, through the uh, entire book and see the events as they occurred. But what if there were pages missing from your book? Or someone just did not record something and it doesn't show up in the book. Those would be unconformities. Unconformities are these gaps in the geologic record because either rocks weren't being deposited at that, uh, that location where you can see the rocks exposed, or they're actually removed by something, say a glacier or a stream or some kind of erosion. And there are three kinds of unconformities. The first one is called the disconformity. And let me go ahead and give you the description, then we'll see an animation and what they look like in real life. But it's basically where two sedimentary rock layers are separated by an erosional surface. So in other words, <clears throat> You see sediment layers like sandstone or claystone or something like that, and in between you notice that there's been some kind of erosion. So at this outcrop, we can see that there's layers one through five of sediments that were deposited, say, under a shallow sea. Well, what if, as we know it occurs, sea level drops? If sea level drops and there's no more layers accumulating, what can happen is those rock layers are actually removed. Some are completely gone. Uh, layer 5 is completely gone. 4 is almost gone. But if sea level rises again, what can happen is new accumulation occurs. More layers form on top of that. But what we see is that there is this erosional surface. We know something's missing. We don't know how much is missing. If it's just a little bit of 4 is missing or if maybe it's as it shows here. Layers 5 through 14 are gone. We don't know how much time has gone, we don't know how much time has elapsed, but we do know things are missing here. Something has been removed or not recorded. So that's a disconformity. Now, <clears throat> when we're looking at our idealized outcropping, outcrop drawings, what we really will see is something like this, where we have different patterns showing different rock layers, um, and from that eventually we'll be able to describe how the environment has changed at the location, but we will see these nice little squiggly lines. That's indicating some kind of erosion. And <clears throat> that's indicating this unconformity. Now you can see you got this uh, layer up here, which is actually representing sandstone, or excuse me, limestone. And this down here, which is representing uh, probably sandstone. Two sedimentary layers separated by an erosional surface. That's a disconformity. Uh, in real life, this is what you might see, where we have this uh, layer of coal down here. And we can see uh, above that we have some sandstone here that is actually separated by this feature. We can see some of it, uh, of the coal has actually been removed. This is uh, actually an old stream bed. So a stream came by and eroded some of it, then uh, dried up, seavals may erode or something, and then we have this layer of sandstone above it. In nonconformity, 
<clears throat> is the second unconformity. And this is an unconformity between younger sedimentary rocks and metamorphic or igneous rocks below. So here we have uh, an intrusive igneous rock body. All right, so magma has risen up underneath, <clears throat> hardened up, but there's also uh, a layer of sedimentary rock or something above it. If we play through, what can happen is that upper layer actually can be removed. All right, and when it is removed, that igneous rock is actually uh, exposed to weathering and erosion. And if sea levels rise or something happens and new rock layers are put on top of that, then we have this right here. This is our nonconformity, where we have <clears throat> sedimentary rock layers above, and then we have this igneous intrusive rock that uh, is actually has some inclusions in that bottom sedimentary layer. So we know that there uh, was something going on here. Something's missing. So when we are looking at our diagrams, we may see something like this, where a certain pattern here represents uh, granite, which is an uh, as you studied from before, it forms deep underground when magma cools and hardens, and it's in contact <clears throat> with these different layers. All right. Well, these different layers are sedimentary rocks. We have igneous rocks underneath uh, these sedimentary rocks, so that's showing that it's uh, a a nonconformity. Uh, in real life, what we can see is is this. This stuff is basalt. All right, um, and then above it is our igneous rock, or excuse me, a sedimentary rock. Or if we go back to the Grand Canyon, <clears throat> what we can actually see here is that Vishnu schist, a, a metamorphic rock, and directly above that is starting with the uh, sandstone. And uh, won't spoil the uh, the ending, but that actually tells us a lot about what happened deep in the past, uh, how the Grand Canyon area was actually much, much different than what we see today. And the last of the unconformities is probably the easiest one to actually identify. An angular unconformity, as it states in the name, has something to do with angles. Normally rocks are nice and level, but if a layer is at a different angle than the layer above it or below it, then you know something has changed. Originally, rocks are supposed to be flat and horizontal, roughly, and if they're not, something has had to have happened in order for that to, to change. So, here's a little bit of an animation. Okay, we start off depositing these sedimentary layers in nice flat horizontal layers, <clears throat> and then eventually uh, uplifting and folding occur. This occurs when, say, uh, uh, continents collide or something of that nature. And then eventually, as things are lifted up, uh, weathering and erosion want to level it out and begin to lower all of those uh, layers, cutting off the highest ones mo more than the lower ones. <clears throat> and then if deposition reoccurs, those layers that are placed above the folded and faulted uh, layers are nice and flat again. So we have this different, uh, different angle below than we do above. That's our angular unconformity. These layers at an angle compared to the ones above. So when you have strata that are at different angles, it has to be uh, uh, sedimentary rocks. You can see here, the ones below are an angle, the ones on top are nice and flat. Uh, in real life, we see this all the time. We can see here, this is at thicker point, where layers are almost uh, vertical, and the layers on top are still a little bit uh, tilted. Something uh, had to have caused these sedimentary rocks to be uplifted and tilted vertically, sheared off, and then layers are set back up on top. Uh, another good example, these layers here are all at angles. You can even see these are offset, which means something else occurred here. And then the layers on top are flat again. So we'll stop here, and we need to uh, go over those different principles and laws and the unconformities before we move on to actually apply them.